Hey guys, it's Lee. Sorry I haven't been very active lately. I just moved into a new house and I'm still trying to unpack everything. But I've got all my computer stuff unpacked, so I'm good with updating this blog again. And I have to tell everyone this. While I was unpacking, I found a journal. Probably belonged to the other person who lived here. I don't usually read other people's journals, but I decided to take a look at it anyway, and... I have no damn clue what to think of it. I'm just gonna copy everything on this journal and post it here. This needs to be shown to the world. Friday, 7.05 p.m. I finally moved into a new house. I didn't really want to move, but my brother Oliver got a job and we had to be closer to his work. I don't have a huge problem with it, but I just wish he chose a nicer looking house. It's a little run down. There's cracks and holes in the walls. And the carpet is disgusting. And I think I saw a mouse when I looked in the hallway mirror 20 minutes ago. I really hope Oliver will get some money from his job soon. We have to fix this place up. Saturday, 5.24pm. Today was... interesting. While Oliver was at work, I had almost nothing to do around here. Even all of my friends were busy. Since I had nothing to do, I thought I might try to catch that mouse I saw yesterday. I took out a mouse trap from under the sink and began looking around the house to find a good place to put it. Eventually, I put the trap by one of the cracks in the hallway and went to my room. But as soon as I went into my room, I saw something that was... weird. My room has one of these big sliding closet doors that were also mirrors. When I looked at my reflection, I saw someone behind me. It was a young boy. He looked about seven or eight. He was wearing these old style clothes. I think they're called Victorian. I think that was it. His hair was blonde and somewhat curly, and his eyes were green. The weird thing was that he wasn't doing anything. He was just sort of standing there, staring at me. I had no clue how this kid got into the house without me knowing, but I knew I should ask him how he got in and bring him back to his mother. I turned around to talk to him. Um, hello? How did you... Before I could finish my sentence, he was gone. I don't mean he walked away, he just disappeared. I began to look everywhere around the house, but I found no trace of him. Just around that time, Oliver came home. I told him what had happened and his reaction was not the one I expected. He thought I was joking. I kept telling him that I wasn't. Eventually, he said that he'd keep an eye out for that kid, though I don't think he really will. Sunday, 8.10 p.m. The kid was here again today. I was walking down the hallway and I saw him in the mirror's reflection. He did the same thing he did yesterday, standing there, not moving, just watching me. How does this kid even find his way into the house? I keep all the doors and windows locked while Oliver is at work. I turn around to try and talk to him and he disappeared again. But as soon as I looked back in the mirror, he came back. It was creeping me out far too much. I had to get out of the house. Before I even opened the front door to get out, I saw that mouse again. It looked like it ran into the living room. I didn't want the rodent running around the house, so I quickly walked back into the hallway, carefully picked up the mouse trap, and put it by a small hole in the living room wall. Once I was done with that, I went outside and sat down on the porch for a while. Soon Oliver came home. I tried telling him that it was the kid again, but just like last time, he didn't believe me. Though he did believe me when I mentioned the mouse. He didn't look too happy about it, but he looked relieved when I mentioned I set up a mouse trap. Monday, 7.32 p.m. Today I went around the neighborhood to ask about that kid to see if anyone knew who he was. For a while I didn't get any information. Soon I came across a man who happened to be a history teacher at one of the nearby colleges. I told him what happened and he seemed pretty curious. He asked me where I lived. I told him and he nodded. He told me this. Around the 1800s, a man and his son used to live in the same place where I live now, but it was a completely different house. I can't remember his father's name, but I sure do remember the kids. His name was Samuel Kingsley. 
but everyone called him Sammy. He was a well-behaved kid. He liked to play with alphabet blocks. His father always tried to raise him to be a gentleman, and I think they lived happily together. But one day Sammy began acting strange. He started staring into all the mirrors in the house. He wouldn't eat, sleep, or even talk to anyone. This went on for days until his father began having a doctor come over to see Sammy. The doctor said he was mental. Mr. Kingsley wasn't too happy to hear that. He recommended that Sammy be put into a hospital, but he didn't want to do it. Soon, Sammy began playing with his alphabet blocks again, but he always spelled out things like, I can see you, or Milo. His father was getting really worried about him. Then one morning, Sammy disappeared. Mr. Kingsley looked everywhere for him, but couldn't find him, until he looked into one of the mirrors. Sammy was in the mirror's reflection, watching his father. I'm not sure what happened right after that because the history teacher began mumbling. I told him to speak up a little, and he did, just when he was getting near the end of the story. He said about a month later, Mr. Kingsley died of unknown causes. Lots of people say he died in his sleep, but I'm not sure about that. A few years later, with nobody living in Mr. Kingsley's old house, they tore it down. Then around 1973, they built the house I live in right now where the old house used to be. At this point, the history teacher complained that he was late for something important and ran off. I'm a little upset that I didn't get to hear the entire story, but I'm glad I talked to him about this. I know about Sammy, and I know that it's him that I've been seeing in my house. Maybe I can try talking to him. Tuesday, 5.09 p.m. Okay, well, talking to Sammy didn't seem to work because all he did was the same thing he'd always been doing. Also, today I heard a very loud snap sound. I knew it was the mousetrap. At first I thought, Oh, hell yeah. That's what you get, you rodent. But when I walked over the, where the trap was, the mouse wasn't there. The trap went off but didn't catch that damn mouse. Well, that's just great. Then huge chunks of the ceiling decided to fall on me and leave a giant hole in the ceiling. But that's not all. Turns out that another bunch of objects fell on me too. This time they were blocks, alphabet blocks. A bunch of them landed on my head and really hurt. But that's not the craziest part. I left the house to get the broom from outside and clean up the mess. But when I got back in, the chunks from the ceiling were gone and the blocks were still there. They were rearranged to spell out, don't hurt Milo. Milo? Who's Milo? I remember that the history teacher mentioned Sammy used to spell out Milo with his alphabet blocks, but I'm not sure who Milo is, but I don't care. I just set up the trap again and put it in another room in the house. Also, I had the best opportunity to prove to Oliver that Sammy was there, although it didn't end well. Right around when he came home, I was in my room and Sammy was in the mirror's reflection. I just thought, this is great, now Oliver will have to believe me. I quickly ran over to Oliver and took him back to my room. Sammy was still in the reflection. I just pointed at him and said, See? Right there! I told you! Unfortunately, the only thing my brother said was, I don't see anyone else in the room. What? You don't see him? He's right there! Yumi, I really don't see anything. Can we not do this right now? I had a long day at work. After that, he just went to his room to lie down. I couldn't believe it. Sammy was right there, right there, and yet Oliver couldn't see him. I guess I'm the only one who can see him. Great. Oliver must think I'm going nuts, but Sammy must be pretty damn happy because as soon as my brother said he didn't see anyone else in the room, he just gave me a twisted smile. My god, it was unnerving. I thought maybe I would show Oliver the alphabet blocks, but they were gone. I have no idea what happened to them. Even the hole in the ceiling disappeared. How is that even possible? <sighs> Someday. Hopefully tomorrow will be better. Wednesday, 6.48 p.m. That mouse is dead. I heard a loud snap sound, went over to the trap, and there he was. Hooray! That's one less thing to worry about. And I didn't see Sammy all day. Good thing, too. 
He was starting to really freak me out. Same day, 11.45 p.m. I just saw the scariest thing I have ever seen in my life. I was asleep until I woke to this loud banging noise. It sounded like somebody hitting my closet door. At first, I thought it was Oliver, so I sat up and said, Oliver, why are you doing... But it wasn't my brother. It was Sammy hitting the closet mirrors. He was hitting the doors so hard they were shaking, like he was trying to get out. And he looked very angry. Really angry. I just ran out of my room without even thinking about it. That's it. I'm sleeping in the living room from now on. There's no mirrors in there. Thursday, 3.09 p.m. I don't understand. I'm seeing him everywhere now, not just in my house. I went out to see one of my friends at the coffee place, and I went to use the washroom. Right when I got in there, I saw Sammy in the mirror watching me. I didn't even want to deal with it, so I just ran out of the bathroom in a panic. My friend wanted to know what happened while I was in there because I looked horrified. I just told her nothing happened. Even if I did tell her about Sammy, she wouldn't believe me either. But she said, Nonsense. You look like you saw something. See? She took out her pocket mirror and showed it to me. But I didn't just see me in the small mirror. I saw Sammy right behind me. And he had that horrible smile on his face. I just ran out of there without saying a word. I'll have to apologize to my friend later for bailing like that. I honestly don't know what's going on. I'm not just seeing him in my house anymore. I'm seeing him every time I look at something that has a reflective surface. Stop following me, Sammy! Friday, 10.08 p.m. I don't know what to do. I can't get one moment of peace without that damn kid staring at me. And the last night was even worse. He tried to fucking kill me. It happened like this. My brother noticed I was sleeping in the living room and made me go back into my room. I tried telling him I couldn't, but he wouldn't listen. So I went to my room and noticed that Sammy wasn't in the mirror's reflection. I just sighed in relief. I thought I could get a decent night's sleep in my own room. But I was wrong. I woke up in the middle of the night feeling terrible. My throat was hurting and I couldn't breathe right. I couldn't even get up. It was like there was a weight on top of me. All I could do was look around the room with my eyes. When I looked in the mirror, I saw Sammy sitting on top of me with his hands around my neck. I screamed out of panic. I began moving like crazy to get him off, but he was still hanging on to me. With every passing second, it was getting harder for me to breathe. I thought I would die. But my brother came barging into the room, and the second that he did that, Sammy disappeared. I was able to breathe again. What the heck were you screaming about? My brother asked. He looked pretty pissed at me for waking him up. But it wasn't my fault. Sammy tried to kill me. I knew Oliver wouldn't believe me even if I did try to tell him that. So I had to lie. I had a nightmare. The look on my brother's face changed once I said that. He still looked a little angry, but he also looked concerned. He walked over to me and gave me a hug. It's okay, you're safe now, he said. I actually felt relieved when he did that. I hugged him back without saying a word. As soon as I stopped hugging my brother, Sammy came back and gave me this grim look. He got a- out some alphabet blocks from his pocket and spelled out, Your brother can't help you. I nearly had a heart attack. I didn't want to spend another second alone, so I asked Oliver if I could stay in his room. Thankfully, he said yes. Saturday, 12.07 p.m. I asked Oliver if I could go to his work with him, but he said it wasn't allowed. I'm just going to stay in the living room for today. Even though there are no mirrors in there, I had to cover everything that had a reflective surface in there. I don't want to see him again. As soon as I was done covering everything in the living room, a bunch of alphabet blocks fell from the ceiling and they spelled out, you hurt Milo. And right after that, more blocks came out and spelled, I'm coming. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Stop! Just, just leave me alone. I don't know how much longer I can last. I have to write down as much as possible. I just heard a loud crash come from the room. I don't want to take a look. 
Now I'm hearing footsteps. I really hope that it's just Oliver. They're getting closer. That's not Oliver! It's Sammy! I can see him, and he's not even in the mirror. What's going on? Go away! Go away! He just said, die to me. The rest of the pages were illegible, except for the last one. And this is what the page says. She hurt Milo. Guys, this seriously is one of the creepiest things I've read in my life. I really hope that this is some kind of joke. I'm not one to believe in this kind of stuff, but this... This is giving me second thoughts. I don't even know. I must be tired from unpacking everything. Well guys, I'll keep you updated on what's going on. See you next time.